Um, <laughs> but um, so I'm looking at the stuff and going, okay, this is cool. You know, I was kind of honestly, I thought to myself, you know, I was kind of hoping we could be really close, but I don't think we're gonna have the same kind of interest. You know, like I'll be polite and listen, but it was kind of like, okay, you know. Um, I mean, it, it was cool. I mean. Sam, Sam put out what was it an album a year for 10 years I mean that's pretty impressive when how I realized how much work goes into and I don't even fully comprehend but I see how much work Sam puts into music that he writes and lyrics and I, that's a lot of work and time and energy but anyhow we're going down he's asking me about these words and you have to understand um the etymology of words is very interesting to me and very important to me um uh, not syntax. Um, the correct context of what you're using um, is also very important to me, uh, and part of that comes from uh, being a, a Bible student. Um, you need to interpret in context. Hey, man. Uh, if you don't, I can't just throw out a random Bible verse to suit my uh, well. Let's opinion. let's put it this way: you can do your devotions like this. You can just crack your Bible open and go. Um, I don't know. I can't remember the verse or there's, um, there's some people use this as an example where, um, uh, do what the Lord says or, 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 you know, whatever. And thus the Lord commanded and you should do, or, you know, something like that phrase. And the next day you open it up and he went out and hung himself. And so do yourself. Wow. That's, that's going to be good advice. Go out and hang yourself right there. So, um, and that's, that's not a direct quote. I, that's not even like a full verse, but it's, it's used to be, if you take verses out of context, you're going to come up with some really weird meanings. That's the point of the example. Absolutely. So he's talking about this stuff and I, I can't read or write in the ancient languages. Or I can't read them yet. Um, but I want to, I want to study them. I want to move on to pursue my masters of divinity, which is really a study of ancient languages. And I would like to get my doctorate of divinity, which again is going even deeper into the Hebrew and the Aramaic and even the Greek. Um, I want to be able to read Enoch in its original language. I want to be able to read the Bible, the Pentateuch, the Torah in its original language, um, the New Testament in its original language. Um, it just be so cool to understand the context of the languages and the culture and to get their full meanings. I'll just be... That'll be really oh, come cool. on, man. KJV only. <clears throat> anyway. Um, <laughs> so, um, and please understand when I, when I respond like that, I've got nothing against King James only people. Um, you're Christians too. You love the word. I respect that. Um, what I do have difficulty with, and I have difficulty with this with anyone. I've done a lot of street evangelism. And uh, when I'm out there sharing the gospel with someone and someone walks up to me, are you using the King James Version only Bible? No, I'm using the English Standard Version, which in case you didn't know, um, uh, unless I'm mistaken, is translated from the Texas Recepticus, which is the same original text that the KJV is translated from, um, and it's just done modernly. Um, but furthermore, when you walk up to me and then that person starts screaming and yelling at me saying, you're not using the KJV, this man's leading you to hell. And this person walks away and, go, and literally says to me, I don't care. You guys fight. You know, what, what do you know? You can't even agree. Wow. Well, here's the gospel. Jesus Christ came to this earth because he loved everyone so much that he wanted to have a personal relationship with you and so that you could have one with his father with his father so that he could become our father so that we wouldn't have to live in eternal separation and hell from him. So he came to this earth as an infant in humility, born in a stable. He was raised as a son of a carpenter. All right. No money, no prestige. He taught for three years and then he was given the most brutal execution in the history of mankind which is the crucifixion for you and me. Three days later, that man, Jesus Christ, because he was perfect without sin, was risen from the dead. The father raised him back to life. And now he offers that salvation, that payment for our sin as a free gift to us. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? The gospel doesn't change so much. And if you read it in the English standard, or if you read it in the KJV, and when someone runs up to me and takes away the opportunity for someone to hear that, that makes me angry, and yeah. I think that would make the Apostle Paul pretty ticked. Well, let me um, let me let me just tangent for a second. Okay, out of the K, KJV thing. Well, with 
on that tip i have to read this to you and this is just I'll, i might just cut this out but i just think this is hilarious and i know you're gonna laugh so hard oh boy <laughs> so leonard on the most recent little interview that he did with some dude that contacted him a pastor mm-hmm. um he there's some dude this guy thomas gamble he he leaves this uh quite a awesome remark here he says there are no bibles superior to the king james the originals were perfectly translated by the 47 translators. Please do not deceive people now. God never intended the world population to learn Greek and Hebrew. You are disappointing me now. The King James translators did a perfect job and God made sure. There is no other Bible that has incorporated the Greek and Hebrew transcripts. There are no originals available. <laughs> if, so, if so, give me the address of where I can go to read them but of course i must learn to speak hebrew and greek wrong king james cambridge bible is the perfect word of god now here's what leonard says <laughs> this is the best he goes you're right thomas god never intended for the world population to learn greek and hebrew even though most of the bible was written in those languages and those are the languages and manuscripts that the cambridge king james bible comes from you're right thomas all the followers of christ for the first 1600 years of church history are doomed to hell because they didn't have access to the cambridge king james <laughs> bible you're right thomas most christians alive today are doomed to hell unless they understand english so they can read the cambridge king james bible you're right thomas my german grandmother who helped lead me to christ is burning in hell right now because she couldn't <laughs> read the cambridge G- king james bible wow and preferred to read the Bible in Gothic German text. You're right, Thomas. You're always right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, Thomas, if you're listening to this. Um, okay, first, I want to say a couple things. Uh, <laughs> and Leonard, wow. <laughs> it, it keeps going, too. But. Leonard, I don't think I've ever heard you um, so directly put it to someone in such sarcastic terms. Um uh, but it, you it gotta was... read more of his comments then. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. I Sam has read a lot more, um, but okay. So I, I will, I will say this though to Thomas, you are correct in to say that the KJV was taken extreme care in translating. Now I believe they still do. However, um, they took a very special care in translating it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll consent to that. Um, historically, however, they did not have the originals. They have the Texas Recepticus text, which, as Leonard pointed out, is a compilation of not only Hebrew and Greek, but is Aramaic text as well. Which, interestingly, I have heard a rumor and I've been trying to look in for verifying information. Um, If any of you know that the New Testament was originally written in the Aramaic, which I would find very interesting, which actually makes quite a bit of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, I'm still researching that one. Um, But all that to... Um, say Thomas, Leonard does make a good point. Uh, first of all, the Bible, the New Testament, was translated into common day German long before it was translated into English. A little fellow named Martin Luther, you know, nailed those points to the uh, the Catholic Church. Um, I forget how many. Wow, I'm drawing a blank. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on that. Anyway, um, truthfully, you you need to be careful about the assertions that you make. Um, the King James has been used mightily. Also, um, as you are referencing as the Cambridge KJV, um, you are probably well aware there are multiple versions or editions rather of the King James Bible. Um, I mean, I think, I don't remember what it's up to. Like last time it was 16th or 17th version of the KJV. Um, and really, okay. And by the Cambridge KJV, are you're talking about the 1611 version, the original translation? Um, of it, which most of that English is now undistinguishable from for, for most people. Now, I can read it. As I said, I like words. I like language. I, I'll go find out the meaning of a word. That's fine. Um, but I'm not going to use that with the common bum on the street. You know, I'm going to I'm going to walk up to a guy who's in a gang, you know, just kind of swagger around on the street, the streets of Bronx or Brooklyn down there and be like, let me tell you about the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, thou hath... No, you're not going to do that. What did... Um, oh, shoot. Was it Paul or was it Christ? It was Paul. I have become all things 
to all men. Okay. Now, did that mean that he became, you know, a male prostitute at the temple to reach them? No. Um, but he, what it meant was, is he went to where they were and talked to them in terms that they could understand. Yeah. I mean, look at how he addressed um, the Athens, the Athenians. Uh, they knew nothing about the scriptures, but he went and he found that monument to the unknown God and said, look, look at this. Here's the unknown God right here. This is the guy that I worship. The creator of all things, the most powerful. And he had a context. He met them where they were at and explained it in terms that they could understand. Okay? And think, that's the KGV issue. Yeah, and I think I think to sum that up on my thoughts, and I'm not, you know, as, you know, educated as you are on all this, but, I mean, it, it seems like it's easy to trade God's word for man's interpretation of word. And, yes. And, uh you know, we should be there is there. I mean, we talk about a lot of things on this show, you know, that maybe not pertinent to somebody who basically doesn't understand the gospel. And that's the most important part. You know, that's the most important thing. And I think it can be argued very easily that, you know, all of these translations do teach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least the ones that we're aware of that we're referencing, and uh, that's the most important thing is getting that out there. And as long as people are coming to Christ, I mean, truly, and there's a change in their heart, change in, in their life, change in their walk, um, that's that's what's important. So Cambridge, King James Bible, hey, that's all good, y'all. Mm -hmm. I ain't hating on that. Yeah. One thing a professor of mine said at Bible school, and I've always remembered it, is you need to pick your hills, your, your uh, pick what hills you need to die on. And the translation of the Bible is not one that I need to die on unless you start changing it and say, and like the Jefferson Bible, that's not a Bible. Sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, uh, that's when you come into the altar in the scripture, you have a problem. And I will say I, I have heard that the New American Standard, the NIV, um, some of them are those newer translations. They, they come from a later version of Greek text that origin supposedly altered. I think there might be some validity to that, but that is part of the reason that I want to learn the ancient languages so I can read them. I can go and look at a copy of his text and I can look at a copy of the Texas Recepticus and compare them. I can look at the oldest manuscripts we have and compare them to each other and, and be able to say, wow, okay, this fits, this doesn't, this seems to be accurate, this doesn't, or, you know, he really did take something out or no, he didn't. Um, and that's why I want to learn to study them because what do we always say? Verify for yourself. Hey, you know, I can read everyone's opinion up and down, left and right, but I want to be able to look at it for me and be able to go, that's true. That's not, you know, this is really what it says. This isn't what it says. And that's, that's my desire. So anyway, <clears throat> Uh, word etymology that all came off of the pizza, the epic pizza. <laughs> we just did, we just did an, a total rabbit trail, but that's okay. We can. It was good. No, we can leave it in there. I liked it. I it think was that, good. I think there was some good good stuff in there. So, all right. Anyway, so um, pizza run, boom, pizza we're, run. So we, uh, Sam tries this stuff out on me, and I'm like, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I'm I'm following with it, and uh, the next day, oh. It was uh, Martin Luther King Day was the next day, which I didn't have work. Um, and Sam said, hey, there's this, this, this film I'd really love you to watch. You know, would you want to come over? You and Elizabeth. And <laughs> I was like, he was home and it had to do with what we were talking. I was like, yeah, you know, I'd like to see more of that. And uh, so Elizabeth and I and Sam and his wife, Mandy, all four of us sat down. Our wives watched it with us. Well, Guys, they haven't watched another film with us like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we watched it, and that film was Leonard Ulrich, Secret Societies and Biblical Prophecies, Volume 1. New World Order, sorry, Secret Societies yeah, and Biblical yeah. Prophecies. So anyway, I love history, but I was taught the accidental version of history, as Leonard would say. I think all of us were. Um, but I'm looking at it. I'm very familiar with church history and I've seen things on my own study of verifying history up to this point where like JFK, uh, what you're saying doesn't line up, you know, 
So I'm watching Leonard's film intently and closely. He's using a lot of scripture. Now, what I had mentioned before about context, context is very important to me. So when he's putting these scriptures up on the screen, I'm reading them. I'm listening very intently to what he's saying. 